So what's up guys, welcome back to the gaming channel where we are not good gamers, just good people who play games. And we are in Bangkok, Thailand. So thank you so much once again to PlayStation Asia for inviting us over to try out two new upcoming games. Which are Days Gone and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Also, we have a very special guest joining us later in a one-on-one -on -one interview. So excited for that. I wonder what you're going to talk about. We'll see you later on, alright guys? So let's go and enjoy. So we've got Mr. Lee, David Lee from Ben Studios here. Thank you so much for joining us. From day one of pre-production for Days Gone, how has it evolved from then until now? Our, our team has been working on the game for six years, so I've seen a handful of different versions of the game and, and how it's evolved, and it's actually really exciting to see it come to this point, to see this final product. I actually saw the first trailer for this game three years ago, yeah. where he went into this warehouse. There were options where you can actually pull down a table so you can slow down and affect it. Are the options still there? Yes, yeah, so what you saw was the lumber mill uh, demo and that is still available and that's actually one of the higher number of freakers. I think uh, back when we shot off that demo, there was 500 freakers that you're going against. So yeah, that those options are still available in those kind of scenarios. So you'll have a lot of fun with those. During that demo, I noticed the freakers were a bit weaker. Mm -hmm. Like they were easier to kill mm -hmm. when you were stuck with that water tower. I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we necessarily don't tone down the, the uh, health or the the attack of the freakers there there it's, it's very slight but at that point you are fighting you know 300 freakers just the way they normally are but you know in that demo that we showed off they he had better weapons more equipment so it, it does make things easier for you but you know with our game design we really want to make it hard for the player we really want to make them feel like really awesome when they do to feed all those guys we need fuel to try fast travel right yeah so what if i'm in a camp so can i fast travel camp to camp without fuel without fuel no you're gonna need you always need fuel to get to each location and every camp actually sells you fuel and on the mini map it shows you kind of pings locations of possible locations where you can find gas what is deacon's end game honestly and besides his reason to live what's his end game i mean when the world's gone to shit it's like all you're really trying to do is survive and just trying to find a reason to live and as you play the story and you know we have 30 hours more than 30 hours of uh, storylines that you can check out and play um, you'll find out more reasons why he survives why he keeps pushing along uh, as you start to play the story more and more you'll see these reasons and, and hopefully you'll connect with the characters so thank you so much for sitting down with us thank you guys make sure to pick up days gone april 26 uh, we hope you like it for zombie games like this, you would usually have to choose between having awesome combat variations, immersive open world mechanics, or a fulfilling storyline. But Ben Studios has definitely implemented a bit of everything into this game. And that is why I would highly recommend this game when it comes out on the 26th of April. So here are three reasons why I love the game and a few reasons why I may not like it so much. Storyline the game starts off like any other zombie post-apocalyptic games out there, whole city in chaos after a breakout, and it's every man for themselves. Our story follows Deacon St. John, his very much alive wife Sarah, and his old biker gang Boozer, trying to flee from the chaos only to be separated when a rescue chopper couldn't carry any more passengers. Gameplay starts off a few years after the incident and Deacon, on the search for a reason to live, gets caught in between doing favors for settlement leaders, clearing Freaker's nest, and following little clues as to what really happened to Sarah. Within that one hour of demo gameplay, we managed to catch a few flashbacks of how Deacon and Sarah actually met, really adding that emotional connection to the characters. Combat Whether you're a gung-ho, trigger-happy maniac, or a stealthy ex-siphon filter agent, this game will help you fulfill your needs. Seeing that the weapons in this game has a wear and tear factor and you don't exactly have unlimited ammunition at your disposal, you really have to think twice about your approach towards any situation. We all want that satisfying crunch whenever we clobber a zombie in the head. This game definitely delivers on that front. No one person has the exact same experience. It's an open world game. So the chances of doing the exact thing at the exact same time with other players are highly unlikely. Vincent and I literally started the game at the exact same time, but I managed to somehow fall behind him at one point all because I accidentally brought Deacon into a trap rope, which almost cost him his head. It really depends on which route you take and everything else that comes along with it. 
This game also features a dynamic weather system and a day-night cycle, both of which will impact the way the game plays. Freakers are nocturnal, which means they are more active during the night, and you could also expect more freakers roaming about in the open during winter time. And this is why I don't like the game. Quick travel. Deacon's bike is all he has. There's no teleportation, so quick travel in this open world literally means being one with the wind on your metallic stallion. And this is where other problem arises because you would always need to fill up your tank with fuel and also there's a durability percentage on your bike. So you would still need to take care of how you ride it, not to mention the wild wolves that'll just appear out of nowhere and start to chase you down. This actually adds to the realism factor to the game, but after playing it for an hour, I was already slightly rested traveling from one point to another and imagine how big this open world would actually be after I clocking about 30 hours of gameplay. Like any other zombie survival game besides the storyline to get you into the game, the game doesn't really have much to offer and it'll end up as a one and done game. I can imagine myself grueling through the storyline, getting emotionally involved with the characters and just getting lost in the moment. But after that, everything else seems slightly repetitive. It's still definitely a game I'm looking forward to no matter what. But I'm afraid that once I see myself at the end of the storyline, I'll be asking myself, now what? The other game that we managed to play is Sekiro Shadow Die Twice and we actually had a chance to watch the trailer at PlayStation Experience last year in Bangkok, Thailand. So this game is brought to you from the creators of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. And in this game, you play as a katana-wielding shinobi or ninja in the Sengoku period with many samurai themes. However, in this storyline, this ninja ends up with a prosthetic arm. And I'm not going to tell you how we got it, but let's just say you were meant to lose one fight. So Sekiro, unlike the previous Soul games, does not have a full RPG mechanic. In which case, we have no classes, no builds, and no more of modifications like this to your face. So here are the few things that I like about Sekiro Shadow Die Twice and one particular thing that I don't like about this game. So in this game, your character has a prosthetic arm that you can upgrade to have part of it turn into weapons. You have to look for parts throughout the entire world and bring it back to the person who gave you the arm in the first place and have it make you upgrades to your arm. And the best thing about this is that it has a grappling hook. And the stealth aspect of this game is that you are able to go throughout a whole level without engaging with any enemies besides the boss. The map is pretty linear and there are a lot of vantage points for you to take advantage of so you can always just grapple, hook your way through the enemies without even being noticed. The combat in this game is much more fluid and flashy as compared to the Dark Souls counterpart and there is no stamina in the game. Meaning you can hack and slash to your heart's content. However, if you do intend to do that, enemies will start to adapt and start parrying, dodging and blocking you and you'll fill up your posture gauge. And also, if you're into the whole ninja samurai thing, this is definitely your game because didn't I say more? Really, katana, wielding, ninja, katana, ninja, samurai, nin really, come on guys. The scoring for this game has returning composer Yuka Kitamura who has composed the soundtracks for the Dark Souls series along with Bloodborne. And of course, this soundtrack is highly thematic with the Japanese Wadaikos and the Japanese flutes Shinobu. If you want to know more about the gaming soundtrack and the composer, all you have to do is just click the link in the description below. To be fair, this game actually feels super polished, fluid and the theme is on point. However, what I don't like about this game is that the guys from software will always have this underlying theme that tells every player to get good. So we here at Not Good Gamers, we live up to our name. Like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, this game is just set to boil your blood. For a whole hour, I was actually stuck on one map until one of the event organizers actually came up to me and tell me that, you know, there are other maps to try. You don't have to be stuck on this one map. But I actually spent one whole hour on one map and it came to a single point in the game where I just stealthed my way all the way to this big ass ogre and I, I still died over and over and over again. So this game actually takes a lot of patience and if you don't have the patience, this game is not for you. 
unless you don't like it when someone tells you to get good and you actually have to get good then maybe this game might be for you just try not to break any controllers oh my god <laughs> Alright guys, so that concludes our video for today. Thank you once again to PlayStation Asia for inviting us over to try out Days Gone and secure Shadow Die twice. Yeah, it's such an amazing experience. Like, I've actually been following Days Gone for a while now and playing it now, ooh, they live up to their promises. And secure Shadow Die twice, like this game really lives up to Dark Souls. Like, I play Dark Souls a lot. Have you played Dark Souls? I played Dark Souls, I played Bloodborne. Yeah, you that's probably suck at it. I mean, you probably suck at it. Alright guys, so do keep in mind that Sekiro comes out on the 22nd of March and Days Gone will come out on the 26th of April. So as usual guys, do remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment down below which game are you more excited for. I would like to see that, yeah? Okay. I'm excited for Sekiro, how about you? I'm excited for Days Gone, honestly. Days Gone. Days Gone yeah. At least I don't have to break my TV screen whenever I play with Days Gone. <laughs> you just suck, guys. <laughs>